Standing above the coastline washed away by last year's tsunami, the heads of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund said today that Japan's response to the March 2011 disaster offers crucial lessons for the world about the value of preparedness and prevention. The leaders of the two institutions visited an elementary school and a former playground, now a debris management site, in the northeast city of Sendai, to learn firsthand about the disaster and how preparedness worked. These kinds of disasters are happening everywhere. And so one of our um, tasks, the reason we're here, uh, is because we want to make the point that preparing for these disasters has got to now spread to all the different countries in the world. Hearing about the tremendous recovery efforts that followed the tragedy, the managing director of the IMF said the visit instilled a mixture of both sorrow and huge admiration for the recovery of the region. You know, given the site, I think, uh, I think of, of children. Uh, it's a playground, it's a place where they were enjoying themselves, having fun, and they were not worried about anything. And suddenly, disaster hits and, uh, and their life is completely uh, uh, you know, disrupted, damaged, and for some of them, taken. At the elementary school in Arahama, the leaders and global policymakers visited the roof, where dozens of students and hundreds of residents took refuge as the tsunami engulfed the coastline. The principal explained how the school and surrounding community instinctively implemented their emergency plans after the earthquake, even though no official warning of the tsunami reached them. The officials were in Sendai to participate in a two-day conference co-hosted by the Government Japan and the World Bank as part of the 2012 IMF World Bank Group annual meetings. Using Japan's experience as a starting point, participants explored the need to instill a culture of prevention worldwide. No country, rich or poor, is immune against disasters. And only together as a world we can cope with the trend that climate change makes even more severe. If we don't invest in resilience, we simply can't afford to continue to develop the way that we do. The dialogue culminated in a session opened by Finance Minister Jojima of Japan, who stressed that this event is a unique opportunity to build global consensus on the necessity to mainstream disaster risk management in every aspect of development. In the panel discussion, the president of the Asian Development Bank explained that rapid growth and urbanization make building resilience a priority in Asia. For countries like Djibouti, resilience means dealing with the challenges of changing climate patterns. It happened some years, about four years, without seeing any rain. It's not about uh, periodic and disaster. It's a kind of permanent disaster we have. Building on the EU's extensive experience in responding to humanitarian crises worldwide, the Commissioner explained what prevention means to a child in a food-insecure environment. What prevention means for this child? We act here in yellow, it costs $10. If we act in the red, it costs $200, and the kid would never grow to be a full member of society. The president of the World Bank concluded by emphasizing the need to continue to invest in the resilience of nations and communities as a necessary ingredient for sustainable development. I will carry these messages to the 67th annual meetings of the IMF and the World Bank Group in Tokyo and beyond. Starting today, let's work together to make this world safer and build a better future for everyone, especially the poorest and most vulnerable. Thank you. Disaster risk management must be understood as an essential component of development going forward. It can provide an important line of defense against the uncertainties of the future. <laughs>